Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we are going to use what is certainly the strongest deck I've ever created. It's so strong that words can't even describe it, so let's go give it a look. So of course we'll be playing a Scoia'tael Call of Harmony deck because this is objectively the best leader ability in the entire game. Especially when we start out with a bunch of bronze neutral units, such as these. Then of course we're going to want to play our defender in the melee road to keep our units safe. That way, we can play Kahir to get boosted whenever our opponents get boosted. And then, we can play Visigoda to boost our opponents and get boosted from Kahir whenever we do so. So then naturally, we'll finish with Regis, who will get really big because of all the bleeding that we've done. So there's a look at the deck, and obviously it's amazing given how many awesome cards we have, so let's go see it in action. Okay, we're going against Syndicate here, and this is a friend of mine. So you know this one's gonna be good. Okay, they'll go Slave Hunter first. It's four power, so it should be fairly easy to steal this. For example, we could go with our Enforcers. Okay, they have it around. But, I have news for you. They can only move two of them with their leader ability. So that means that we go Geralt Quen into Lambert. Then we use Lambert to damage the Iterans. And that gets rid of all but three of them, which we can then destroy with Reckless Flurry. And Reckless Flurry has exactly nine damage if we use all of our charges here, which is enough to destroy all of them. So sorry, buddy. But there are no Iterans allowed. Your damage is going to start to add up a bit here. And the Veil is a little concerning because it does mean that that Griffin Witcher will not get locked at Adrenaline 3, which means that it will continue to deal 3 damage every turn. But now what we do is we go... Alzer's Double Cross to get Helvede out here. And with Helvede, we press this button a whole lot. Because what it does is it spawns in a two-power Firesworn Zealot. And because that Zealot is not a Witcher, it takes two damage as soon as it gets summoned in, destroying it. But because we're spawning in a unit, we generate coins from each of our scribes. And since we have three scribes, we generate three coins every time we press this button. So on net... With every button press, we spend two coins, earn three, gain one overall, and that means once we reach nine coins, jackpot kicks in and boosts our Firesworn Scribe in the process. This time, Dried Matron will give them a little bit of boost as it moves around, but there you see Ermagerd immediately destroying it, so working out that time. So we'll play him here. And sure, he gets a status that boosts Thirsty Dame, but we actually did manage to have Colgrim survive. We'll just cancel out that boost you just got. There goes Colgrim getting a huge boost, which is already enough, but, you know, we gotta see how much this is worth, right? Assure will play Eskel. We'll get a little more damage, and then how big is Erland, you ask? Pretty big. Pretty big. And that means that we will win round one. So they'll start with a blue dream. Hey, wait, no, 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 no. That's impossible. I can't believe what I just witnessed. Not only did they just steal Idoran from our graveyard, they even stole our leader ability so that they could move those Idorans to the other row, giving them a legitimate Idoran setup. Okay, that's it. Release the Maddox, release the Milvas. And now, it's time to dance. Alright, Milva, let's crash this party. Okay, they pass here, but we can get two other Keltelluses down. We will end up destroying one of them in the process, but you know, that brings the Keltellus count up to six. So if you ask me, mission accomplished.
Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. We don't lose on this channel. Wind that one back. All right, and now is the hour. Riders of Rohan, double Sienna, double Yennefer, in the range row, triple deployability, second Yennefer. Here we go. The board has become a second sun. And with our final boost, we get to nearly 900 points. Far more than I've ever gotten. So let's see what they have to say about that. Alright, so they're going to deal some damage, but if they keep on boosting, then we're going to keep on getting closer and closer to 900. Bear in mind, our last card is worth 30 points. Oh no, what have you done? What have you done? How dare you? You're a monster! They have the nerve to yurt in us when we were perhaps on pace for a thousand. Oh, uh, <coughs> sorry, wrong one. Now let's go Zoltan Scoundrel in the range row. That'll allow us to boost one of their rows. And then with our second 10 provision cost card, we get our other Yennefer. That'll boost everyone by two. And that already gets us nearly up to 700. That's even before we activate our Sianas and our other Yennefer, which is of course our biggest combo. Then they go Call the Forest. And this could have potentially been the one thing to shut us down here, but it's Harold Gord, and there's no room to play him. We actually would have loved if they had space for him, because he would have gotten boosted by 13, which would have, of course, boosted our Kahirs by a ton as well. The Gezros' trigger, we're already over 750. Let's trigger Sienna, then Yennefer in the range row, and this is the moment we've been waiting for. What number are we gonna get here? Triple deployability gets us to 1,200. Then we add Zoltan to the equation, and we nearly hit 1,300. So there's a look at the single best deck we have ever played. So happy Halloween, and consider this my Christmas present to you all. If this is your first time checking out the channel, then stick around to check out other Gwent seasonal event videos, and general memory. Thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.